You guys got questions? Well, I've got answers. You guys are watching Ask Stan the Man. How you guys doing? My name is Stan Banks, and I'm from T-Shirt Side Hustle, and I help people start T-Shirt businesses from home. Wherever you're at, and today, I'm answering one of you guys' questions, so if you have a question, make sure you drop that bad boy down in the comments below, and subscribe, and hit that post notification, because I do videos like this all the time. This question came through on a live that I was doing on Instagram while I was working, and I thought it deserved to be a question of the day, and it comes from Billy the Goat underscore seven over on Instagram, and the question is, when starting out, what software do you use? So if you want to hear my answer, stay tuned for right after this intro. Like I said, I feel like this is a huge topic and I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible for you guys because some of you guys have zero design experience. Some of you guys have some design experience. Some of you have been finagling things in Microsoft Word and different places like that, just like I did when I was in the beginning. Uh, and I want to keep it simple for you guys. So industry standard software will happen to be Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and all of those Adobe programs are geared around design in, in, in some type of way. So those are the main two that people use. And then there's some close seconds like a Corel Draw, uh, which would be the alternative to Illustrator. Now, let me back up a second and tell you what type of programs there are. So there's a uh, raster program, which means if you take something very, very small and you blow it up, right, that means it'll be pixelating. You guys see when you get images that are just aren't as crisp as you want them to be uh, and they just aren't as good or clean as you like them to be that's because it's a JPEG raster image JPEG PNGs all of those are raster programs uh, raster uh, file types that are can be made in programs like Photoshop which is a paid version back when I was in college uh, I did start out with the program GIMP and GIMP is a alternative to Photoshop. There are some other ones out there, believe me, uh, that are free, uh, but I couldn't afford Photoshop. And then along the lines, I honestly found a pirated version from a friend and I used that uh, until now where I can actually afford it. Uh, so I don't suggest you use pirated programs, but you know, back in the day, I had to do what I had to do uh, when I couldn't afford the program, just being brutally honest. Uh, but now I am a cloud member and I pay about 30 bucks or something like that a month. I don't even know anymore <laughs> what it costs. Uh, but if you're a student or you have a student around you, you can use their ID and their email and get a discounted rate for the programs that you need. So you can keep that in mind. Uh, but for raster programs, Adobe Illustrator and uh, then a backup program would be something like GIMP. And these programs allow you to uh, create like designs as far as full color images, uh, uh, business cards, all of that stuff. Those are like the standard for visually uh, like gradients and all that stuff. Then on the other hand, you have vector programs. And a lot of people uh, in this industry who just get in like, what is vector? What is this? What is that? Well, vector means no matter how small you make it, you can blow it up as big as you want and it'll be just as crisp as it, as it was when it was a very, very tiny image. Uh, and those file types happen to be like EPS, uh, AI file, which is Adobe Illustrator. Um, a PDF version could be a vector as well. Uh, and basically what happens is uh, those programs like Illustrator, Inkscape will be the free version of Illustrator that you can try out to use. Uh, and um, CorelDRAW is also one of those programs. Now, I personally do not have uh, any... Um, somebody asked me to do some tutorials on GIMP. Uh, I have no desire at the moment or no plans. Let me say no plans at the moment to do tutorials in GIMP or in Illustrator. Uh, design isn't something that I really want to cover. Uh, so I kind of like do it enough to get you guys going. 
Uh, but I put a lot of hours in to learn, and there's a lot of people already doing tutorials on YouTube. You just have to find and apply uh, what you need for the job that you're trying to accomplish. And that's my biggest advice when starting out. You want to design or learn enough to uh, accomplish the task at hand. If you go get a book like they try to teach you in school, uh, get a book and you go through all of this stuff that's in that book, what's going to happen is you're going to be overwhelmed with information. And there's a million, literally five, six, seven different ways to accomplish the same task. The way that I teach you may not be the best way or may not be the most efficient way uh, that it could be done. And somebody else is going to have a difference of opinion or vice versa. So uh, I personally uh, think that you should learn enough to accomplish your task at hand. So if you want to learn how to outline something or offset something, learn how to do that in the program. Now, what people are sleeping on when it comes to design programs is your cutter has to be used with the program and all cutters come with the program that you use. So what I really and truly honestly suggest is you master that program. Uh, I broke in Silhouette Studios down into about seven or eight different uh, tools that you need to learn how to use to be to do basically what I do. Everything you see I, that I do uh, when I'm doing it in uh Silhouette Studios, I do it with about eight tools. And even, honestly, Adobe Illustrator, I'm about, I use about the same things, the same tools, rather, uh, to do my design. The good thing about design programs are when you learn one, you really know them all. Yeah, you may fumble around and try to have to find where it's placed and try to find this tool and figure out what it looks like in this program or where it's at uh, and how exactly it works. But the tools translate over. You know, in uh, Adobe Photoshop, um, Adobe Illustrator, you have a live trace tool. It's called Live Trace, where it tries to take your JPEG image and make it into a vector image. In Silhouette Studios, you have the trace function, where it traces the JPEG or PNG file or whatever file you have in there, and it turns it into a vector for you to cut. It's the same thing. You know, the marquee tools, the marquee tool, the fill tools, the fill tool, offset is offset, uh, creating out like all of these programs literally do the same exact thing they're just made by different companies so they function in a little bit different way they're placed in a little bit different position uh and it, their icons may look a little bit different or you may have to fumble around to find them so don't sleep on just learning how to use that program a cousin of mine uh who i got in the t-shirts he does everything that i do pretty much now he's doing great with his t-shirt designs and things like that uh i'll actually link him up right here he had no design experience He's using Silhouette Studios, and he's doing everything that needs to do inside of that program uh, and is, is is really creating some great stuff out here. Uh, and it's, I'm sure there's more people out there. I just know him because I, I interact with him. Now he doesn't even have to call me anymore. I started from creating his designs that he would sketch, uh, and then now he doesn't even have to call me anymore. He's just off doing his own thing. So don't sleep on just learning that. Whatever you decide to use, just master it. Okay. If you're using a silhouette cameo, you know, you go, if you try to use Illustrator, you got to transport it into uh, Adobe. I'm sorry. You're going to have to transport your, your file into silhouette studios anyway. So if you have zero design experience, I honestly and truly suggest that you just start with your cutter software and then you'll work your way around from there. Um, as far as upgrading, I never have upgraded my silhouette studios, just basic edition. I've never upgraded it. Um, I know some people have, uh, I'm not even sure what features really it allows you to do because I really didn't need to, but I'm gonna have to look into it and maybe follow up this video, uh, with the video on that. And also stay tuned because I will be having some silhouette studios. One, I'm, I'm trying to put together one course specifically on. Uh, a master class probably where I teach those eight tools that I think everybody should learn how to use. Uh, and I teach those tools and then I show you first, I show you how they function all eight of them separately, individually and what it does. And then I show you how I actually put together a few different designs, maybe three or four designs using uh, the, the, the range of tools that I think people should learn how to use and, and stuff like that. So I'm trying to make sure that I covered everything in this video uh, but I, I, if you have more questions, obviously on design or how to do something, uh, put it down in the comments below, uh, and I will help you out from there. So as you guys know, I'm doing stuff like this all the time. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you ask a question so I can keep this series going every single day. Uh, as long as there's a question to answer, I'll 
come out and do it in the car and I will answer a question every single day. So this has been your boy Stan Banks. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Yeah, there's nothing else I want to say. Peace. Oh.